Hey, how's it going? Are you Chris? I'm Chris Atkinson, yes. Nice to meet you, Chris. So what do you do here in your lab? So we're very interested in something called soft robots. Uh, and uh, uh, let me tell you how I got started in soft robots. I understand you used to work for uh, ILM on R2-D2 and C-3PO. Yes, that's right. Uh, even though in the movies people got very close to C-3PO, C-3PO makes me nervous. So if we're going to get robots into somebody's house, I think we have to make them super safe. Right. In fact, so safe that even if their, their computer crashes and their brain is dead, all they're going to do is bounce off the person. Right. And so we thought for a while there are a lot of ways to do this, but the crazy idea we came up with was let's make them like pool toys. Let's make them inflatable. And so this is the inspiration for Baymax in Big Hero 6, is that right? That's right. So we were working on this in around uh, 2011, and a Disney director named Don Hall, they knew they were going to make a movie about robots because it was from this Marvel comic, Big Hero 6. Yeah. And in the comic, actually, the robot is this big, fierce, shape-shifting green thing, and it could be a big monster robot as well. And they weren't happy with that idea. They didn't want it to be a Transformer or a Terminator. Right. So they were just looking for something else. And we said... Well, if it's going to interact with people and get really close to them, it needs to be safe. It needs to be soft. We think inflatable is a good way to go. So they got all excited about inflatable. Right. We were also, the reason we were doing this is because we wanted robots to take care of people, healthcare. Sure. So they took that idea as well. So then the movie came out, it turned out that, you know, a really major player in the movie is this robot Baymax that's soft and it's what's called a personal health care companion. It takes care of people. It kind of looks like this. It's squishy. This is a, now, let, let me just mention, there are lots of ways to make soft robots. Yeah. This is an inflatable robot with fiber fill instead of air. Right. So. But this, in the movie, it's it, kind of a vinyl skin. In the movie, it's a balloon. It's a, yeah. it, 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 they, they use the term vinyl. We use actually polyurethane. Sure. So, so they simplify things for the movie. I know that there are personal robots that are designed for healthcare. They exist these days, but they don't look like Baymax. How close are we to actually having a real Baymax? So I think we're very close on the build the body part. Okay. And In terms of having something that's inflatable. Yes. Uh, a spacesuit is an inflatable robot. And we've had sp spacesuits, the current things they fly around the uh, International Space Station, mm -hmm. are actually very close to Baymaxes. So if, if you said, I want an inflatable thing that's tough, that's rugged, and you know, this looks like a person, that's not hard to build. The part that's hard to build is the brain part, the part that interacts. So right, that can the personal a, part. The personal part, the part can have a conversation with you. Yeah. And uh, that's going to require a lot of work. Yeah, because I know that there's, there's a whole thing that exists, which is called the uncanny valley. And it's where people have a reaction to robots that, you know, particularly if they are, not in the case of Baymax, but if they look, the more human they look, the creepier they feel. And so people have a problem interacting with them. Yes, that's true. And, and in some sense, uh, that's why Baymax is a big win. It, there's no attempt to make it look like a real right. person. It's got these eyeballs and a, a, and a line <laughs> uh, between them. It's supposed to look like a He's temp. very approachable. He's, he's very squishy. He's fat. Yeah, okay? he is. And, you know, he's the, not fast either. He's not fast either. So, so kids feel comfortable with it. So I don't think Uncanny Valley is going to be our problem. Uh, you know, performance is going to be our problem, and performance in terms of how people, you know, what's going to be like to talk to this thing, how well can it pick somebody up, that kind of stuff. Right. So what do you have here? Looks so like... Uh... One of the, the, the uh, controversies uh, in this robot design is whether Baymax should have a skeleton. The soft robot arms we built were totally balloons. There was no rigid part inside. Right. They're kind of like an elephant trunk or an octopus. So what we're trying to do here is figure out, well, uh, can we take that skeleton idea? There are a lot of good reasons to have a skeleton, but can we make it super light? Mm -hmm. So How, you've got carbon fiber here. So 
and in the movie they talk about carbon fiber skeletons right. as well. So we're trying to make that idea practical. And then also these are air muscles. When they inflate, they sort of bulge out and that allows the system to pull. So instead of having an electric motor, an actuator of that kind, you're using air power and, and fluid muscles. The big problem with electric motors is you typically need big permanent magnets. Yeah. And they're heavy. They're heavy, and you, you can you can push them towards the center of the bo body by having tendons or some other kind of transmission, but sooner or later you pay that penalty. Mm -hmm. With the air stuff, we pay a similar penalty. We have to compress the air somehow. Right. Uh, and and so, you know, we're imagining some kind of pump system within the body. Sure. We but you can hide that deep. That's inside. right. We, we we think that the from a systems point of view, the whole thing works out better that way. There's another thing going on that might be interesting to the to Mouser folks, and that is, look at all these air hoses we have going down here, mm -hmm. and look at all these wires we have going down here. We really need to get this to be a single air hose and a single set of wires and distributed electronics. Mm -hmm. uh, some people say robotics is the science of connectors. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what I really need are, are the these are quite large valves. Yeah, you've got a huge manifold there. And, and they, you know, they we're paying a huge weight penalty there. Yeah. We can get much uh, smaller valves and put them out on each uh, muscle uh, and get individual sensors out on each muscle, get individual sensors distributed throughout the thing. One of the things I'd like to talk about is robot skin, where we're going to have a huge amount of electronics out here. Right. And we really got to get uh, robust sort of uh, data buses, power buses, air buses to make this whole thing work. In this I see I see an Arduino which they sell at Mauser, a bunch of passives. Um, what other what other processors are you using in your work here? One of the things we're looking at is an Intel Edison. Um, which which is, is, is actually uh, distributed by Mouser. That's correct, so. and and so that's a that's that's a, a step up from the Arduino, but uh, from a connector point of view, it can be compatible with an Arduino. Definitely. Uh, you know, I see we're going to keep pushing. We we keep wanting the size of the processor uh, smaller. The Intel Edison is it is about that big. Yeah. I'd really like it to be smaller than a dime. Uh, Lower power. Uh, well. Actually, what really kills us is the, the size of the parts and the size of the connectors to the parts. Right. You can give me a tiny little processor, and then I have to build this support board that's surrounded, you know, needs to make 100 connections. Then it's, it doesn't make any difference that the little processor is small because the support board is huge. Interesting. So we've got the muscles here. Right. They're air powered. You're talking about the skin. Yeah. There. Uh, is uh, how does a robot li like that feel? Uh, how does it do tactile sensing? And Young Lei Park over here has been working on a variety of, of skin sensors, and uh, he'd like to talk to you about how those work. All right, let's take a look. Hi, I'm Grant. Hi, I'm Young Lei. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice so, to meet you. what do you have going on here? Let's take a quick look. So uh, we are interested in building uh, sensors and actuators using soft material, so like a silicon robot. Okay. So the future robots should be really soft and also stretchable and flexible. So this is one example of a soft material. You can stretch and you can flex easily. This is just a regular silicon. Sure. Uh, this channel is has only just air inside. Yeah. But we fill this micro channel with liquid metal or liquid conductor. Oh, so you inject it in. Yes. So this is oh, an example of a liquid metal. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. So this is uh, like mercury, very conductive electrically. Yeah. But not unlike mercury, this is non-toxic. I yeah. see you're wearing something uh, right there. So this is one example of a soft object your skin. You can wear on your skin. That's awesome. Yeah. So these yellow parts are filled with ionic liquid, like salt water. Mm -hmm. And then these wire parts are filled with liquid metal. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, sensors on each joint, so it can detect right. your joint motions on your hand. Right, so and it, but it's not like having uh, an armature and a potentiometer. This right, you can yeah. like move all, all over. Right, so it doesn't have any rigid frame structures. Right. So it allows you to your natural motions. Yeah. So when you stretch these this sensors uh, filled with the liquid metal, and then it... <laughs> 
elongates the length of the micro channel, so yeah. it increases electrical resistance. Right? So you detect uh, the resistance change. Sure. But when you compress, uh, it also deforms micro channel, and then mm, you can detect the electrical resistance resistance change. So this is examples of uh, some sensors that we filled with the liquid metal. Yeah. Oh, cool. So it looks beautiful. Oh, and you've got different configurations. Like right. it's not all just uh, linear. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've also got some circular ones. Right, depending on what kind of mo um, what kind of modes you want to detect. Yeah. And this is mode we made yeah. to make this uh, skin. Yeah. Yeah. This is That's cool. Printed, uh, built with a three D printer. Oh yeah. So you're incorporating those types of technologies as well, mm -hmm. so that you can design it in the computer, three D print it very accurately, right. and then paint in your your. Uh, right. We can pour sili uh, liquid silicon on top, and then we cure it. And then this is the first version of the skin yeah. we built. And this skin, in this skin, you have Velcro and Velcro uh, straps. Yeah. So you can strap on your skin. But uh, the second version we built, uh, this guy, is a more sticky material. So you don't oh, really need cool. any Velcro straps. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, that's so neat. It doesn't leave any uh, sticky that's material great. on your skin. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And this is. Uh, just uh, in the middle of the process. So you have a really thin layer yeah. cured on top of a silicon layer. Right. And then you just uh, transfer it to a transparency film. Right. Yeah. This shows all the micro channels and circuits, flexible circuits. Cool. Mm -hmm. And so from here, you inject the uh, salt water and the Ionic conductor. Liquid and liquid metal. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, basically, we can use all liquid metal or ionic liquid. But we cannot uh, directly interface those two liquids because it will mix together. There are some conductive thread in, in between. Oh, cool. Yeah. So in this way, uh, two different liquids are interfacing and maintaining electrical conductivity, but they don't mix each other. So this could actually be uh, something that could be wearable, like wearable electronics right. for humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it could be wearable for humans, and it could be even for wearable for you robots. So you already build, build a robot, and then you can put this skin on top of the uh, robots already built. Wow. Well, awesome. Hey, Preston. Hi. Right? Grant. Grant, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. So what do you have here? Looks like you've got some air muscles here. Tell me about these. All right. These air muscles um, are, are what moves the, um, moves the arm. Okay. Uh, they're basically reinforced balloons. Um, so it's a pneumatic system, so when I pressurize these with air, yep. it causes the diameter to expand. Okay. And the way the reinforcing mesh is done, that makes the muscle contract. And then we can hook that, uh, that muscle up to a cable and have it uh, pull on a joint, which is what's going which on right here. here. Yeah, so air and muscle. And then you just keep repeating. You just keep repeating down the line. If I need more force, I just add more muscles. Uh, etc. And the nice thing about these is that they uh, can output a, a pretty good force and they're really, really lightweight as well. They're only about right. seven or eight grams each, uh, but can supply you know, somewhere around 30 pounds of force uh, each. Really? Yes. Each? Each. Okay. Cool. Um, can you make it work? Yes, I can make it work. <laughs> That's great. So this is all air powered. Yes. And uh, I see you've got a bank of air valves here. Yes, uh, we have a bank of um, just binary on-off valves, and that's what I'm using to uh, turn the arm on, move it around. Um, we've also been testing with using variable flow so that we can get uh, really precise uh, movements. Uh, it is a six degree of freedom arm, yep. uh, five of which are pneumatically actuated, the one by the tip, which would control the hand, which actually is, is right here. Okay. To do a, a twisting motion, we have a, a servo for that. Okay, um, does this one work? Sorry? Does this one work? Yes, it does. Uh, we can have it pick something up if there's something to pick up. So are there any mouser parts in this robot? Yes, actually um, a, a fair number of the electrical components, connectors, uh, things like that, uh, we do get from mouser. I mean, they're, they're, they're a you know, distributor that has pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, as a mechanical engineer, I, I kind of equate it as being the McMaster of electronics. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So a hand like this would be capable of determining how much force it's applying and on given the situation, uh, be able to react accordingly. Particularly if you're in like a domestic medical situation. Yes. You don't want to like 
shake someone's hand and cut off their circulation. Right, exactly. The whole point is to make it safe. Cool. This is nice. Yeah, you, you, can, you can shake it. Uh, and because uh, everything is lightweight, we have lightweight air muscles, we have a carbon fiber skeleton, uh, you know, plastic joints, things like that. There's hardly any momentum to throw around anyway. So even if it does hit someone relatively quickly, yeah. there's not much there in the first place. Right. So you're telling me this is actually, this is actually like Baymax here. Yes. Which you have is, an inflatable thing to go around this. It, it is a step in that direction, absolutely. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.